the issue of IRGC has become even more concerning as we just witnessed the shutdown of the passenger plane. This terrorist action, intentionally or not, executed by the IRGC, emphasized and confirmed once more the terrorist nature of this organization that has no respect for civilian lives. They should have closed the Iranian spa airspace, but they didn't. If you went to court, Iran, in theory, uh, for uh, compensation for victims and terror, Iran, in theory, today could go to court and say, well, this act was a terrorist act was committed by the RGC, but not the Quds Force, and therefore you can't get damages, which is kind of a, it's a ridiculous defense, but it's open according to the current law and, and shouldn't be. So, so that's one consequence. And the other uh, a practical consequence that we've been talking about is, is the issue of money, uh, that uh, you can't you can't send arms to Iran, but you can send money to Iran, to the ROGC, and, and they can use it to buy arms, including uh, uh, arms dedi dedicated to, to terrorist acts, like improvised explosive devices or rockets or missiles and so on. So I, I wouldn't say that it, it has um, only a monetary value. I think it, uh, th this sort of change of law, I, I think it has a, a, uh, a statement of where we are as a country and, and and our concerns about the RHEC, uh, I think to a certain extent what we're talking about here is not money but principle. And, and, and the principle is a, a terrorist is a terrorist, a terrorist. And you can't say, well, if they're doing it through this agency, they are a terrorist. If they're doing it through that agency, they're not.